United States Congress, and I'm joined by United States Senator Tom Cotton of the great state of Arkansas. Senator Cotton, welcome to the Hugh Hewitt Show. It's good to talk to you. Hey, Hugh, good to be back with you, as always. Uh, I I am curious, uh, you know, I've been talking about Trump and national security and talking with Donald about national security, and I'm curious what you thought about the national security discussion at last Wednesday night's debate. Hugh, I commend you and the other panelists in the debate for elevating national security and foreign policy as an issue for debate. Uh, I was disappointed in the August debate that they didn't touch on it more directly, especially the Iran deal at a time when the debate might have still mattered. So I was very glad to hear a very detailed and thorough conversation about the dire straits that our military faces and our rapidly eroding position in the world, uh, whether it's in uh, the South China Sea or in Iraq or in Syria or Ukraine or so many other places. Uh, When I talked to Donald Trump about Syria and whether or not the Congress was wrong not to support the president when he requested authority to strike Syria two years ago, I switched to Senator Rubio and I had in my back pocket an op-ed penned by you and Mike Pompeo and another by Bill Kristol supporting the president's request. In retrospect, ought the Congress to have given the president what he asked for? I don't know how things could have turned out any worse if you had. Mike Pompeo and I were on the right side of history of that, of that matter. As he said to me the afternoon, that, that resolution was pulled from debate and voting on the floor. Uh, the president didn't need to seek our authorization to begin with. He should have enforced his own red line. But that's just one example of his broader failure and inaction in Syria going back now four and a half years. We're starting to see the consequences of that and the wages of or the uh, of refugees that are washing up on Europe's shores, as well as some of the terrorism uh, threat that we've seen in Europe and in the United States, because our inaction in Syria gave uh, the Islamic State both the ideological and the geographic space they needed to rise. And now it's opened the door for Russia to become a major player in the Middle East again for the first time in almost 70 years. So that's that instance two years ago when the president blinked and refused to enforce his own red line, bad as it was, is just one example of how uh, lackluster the president's policy in Syria has been. So I'm curious, with the world on fire this way, what your assessment of the prospects of a government shutdown are and whether they are wise or to fight on that turf as opposed to, say, the defense appropriations bill or whatever? Because I I think what's happening here is a dance we've all seen performed before. The government's going to shut down for a while. There will be a CR that does not fix fundamental problems and something of a mishmash while the world drifts. Hugh, I think it's widely accepted uh, in Washington, certainly across the country, that our military badly needs substantial increases in spending, uh, that we are hollowing out our military, our Marine Corps and our Army are down to levels where they can barely perform the missions assigned to them. The Air Force is smaller and older as a force than it's ever been, and the Navy's as small as it's been since World War I. Uh, unfortunately, the Democrats have con- continuously filibustered the Defense Authorization and Appropriations Act. If it were up to me, I would probably put forward a spending resolution that would fund the government entirely without any cuts to the president or the Democrats' priorities, but give tens of billions of dollars more to the military to make it perfectly clear the demands that the Democrats are placing uh, on America's elected representatives, that they have a dollar-for-dollar increase for every kind of pork barrel project or welfare program imaginable at a time when those are at record high levels uh, in return for any defense spending. I don't think that that's a tenable position for the Democrats to maintain, given uh, the, fa- the dangers that we face all around the world. Is it well articulated? Do they say it in public what they're asking for in private, Tom Cotton? They've been, the Democrats have been very uh, straightforward from the very beginning that while they agree that we need to substantially increase defense spending, they will not vote for a dollar more in defense unless they get a dollar in return for every defense dollar in pork barrel projects and other domestic spending programs. And re- remember, Hugh, we are at record high levels of spending in our government today, and that is because the president, starting with the stimulus, threw the doors open at the Treasury and told every department and every agency of government, come get whatever you want, $800 billion of deficit spending, except for the military. The military was excluded, and the military continued to face devastating cuts. And now the Democrats don't accept that fact. They don't recognize the dangers that we face in the world and the response that we need, and they want to hold the military's spending up so they can get more pork barrel and other domestic spending. I think it, I think it's extremely the American people will punish them uh, next November. Uh, Senator Tom Cotton, very quickly, do you think we have a shutdown ahead? 
I certainly hope not. Uh, I don't know any Republican who wants one. Uh, but in the end, uh, we've lost him there. Because that, taxpayer that, dollars. You're cutting in and out on me, Senator. You must be calling from Arkansas. You're probably calling from Razorback Stadium where there are no completions. <laughs> That's, uh, that, that, cut, that cuts deep, Hugh. Now I'm calling uh, from outside, so just in Washington. Uh, but no, I, I, don't think, I don't think we'll have a shutdown. Oh, good. Good to hear that, Senator. Thank you so much. I want to. <laughs> I couldn't resist that because, after all, I think it was Toledo beat Arkansas.